electric. Yeah, hello. Hi there, ringing regarding um, the letter I've received about the warm home discount. Okay. Well, apparently I'd, I was told when um, by one of your managers when he asked me to apply for it that I'd be eligible, and apparently I'm not. Let me take a look into some of the information then. Right. Uh, may I take your name, please, sir? Yeah, it's Paul. And have you got a contact telephone number? Uh, I have, yes. Which one was the best one for you? The mobile one. Uh, can you confirm for me? It's just if the line cuts, I can call you back, so I know which one I'm using. Yeah, it's uh, the one that ends in um, 542. Lovely, not a problem. So I'm just going to have a read through the account in a moment, okay? Right. Um, let's see. JSA, uh, select the customer to incapacitate JSA to qualify. Uh, right, let me grab that. Um, check that note there. So what benefits are you getting at the moment? I get job seekers, uh, housing benefit. Yep. Do you get council tax credit at all? Council tax credit, yeah. Um, right, that's that one. Now, with the, how it works is we've got different uh, sections that we need to try and fill in. So section A is to do with your income. So the first one is, you've said you get job seekers allowance, yes? Yeah. Then we need to have an additional benefit. So the choices are disability living allowance, severe disablement allowance, capacity benefit, industrial industry, injury, sorry, war disablement, work-related or support of employment and support allowance. I don't know, that's possibly an ESA. Uh, do you have any children who were born after the 1st of April 2009? No. Uh, or any sort of child disability allowance, uh, child tax credit, which includes the disability premium? No. No. Let me skip to part B. Um, so part B in that list is incapacity benefit or severe disablement allowance, or employment and support allowance, so that's the ESA. None of that, no? No. I mean, the other thing to do is, uh, we've got the third section which I can go through, it's only a couple of bits on that, but let me sh uh, call them out to you, Mr. Tansley. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Um, it's one's to do with pension credits, but that's only if you're retired and you get that. Um, if you've got children living in your house, they qualify for free school meals? No. Do you have any children living with you at all at the moment? No. No? No. Um, so at the moment, because you're only getting the job seekers allowance and the council tax, they are two different parts of the, the criteria. And because they don't come under one of the main sections, that's why you haven't uh, applied, been, uh, you haven't qualified for it. Okay, well, I don't know exactly who it's, who it's entailed to us, you know, offer support to, but... Um, it's, this is done by the Department of Work and Pensions. Mm -hmm. So they, they give us the criteria that customers have to meet and then we have to take it from there and hence we do send out the forms. Once they come back, we do check them against the criteria again. So we do manually check them. If yeah, well, my, what, what my situation is, is I'm living on very low money, I'm below poverty and you're charging me front roof for me energy. So, I, I, you know, I'm now being put on a prepayment meter and your voice sounds familiar, so I think it was you or maybe a spot to before. Hmm. How long ago would that have been, do you know? Uh, last year, November time. November time, let me have a look. Uh, I think you were the one that told me to apply for it. Let me see, I see the note on it. No, I've got no, it wouldn't have been me, because it doesn't have my surname on that note. But it could either be a slightly Irish or Scottish accent, mine's a little bit of a mix. I'm from Northern Ireland. Um, no, it's not. Uh, I, mean, I can guarantee it wasn't myself. Um, nothing on that one. Well, anyway, when I, when I, when it comes to a point where I can't, you know, put any electric on because it standard charging the uh, arrears that comes off before. Yeah. I don't get no. Um, I'm not able to use me, me, you know, my central heating. Yeah. Because it's being connected up to me electric. 
So not only have I got no electric, is I've got no eating as well. And you guys are telling me that I don't qualify. But not only are you disconnecting me from, you know, using me energy because I can't afford to make, make the sufficient payment, then I'll go without eat as well. It's crazy. That is crazy. Let me, let me see. John Seagull's lights. Do you not get any extra financial help at all? I don't get anything. I've never had anything. They don't help people who... Who aren't in work. They don't even help people who are in work. Well, they do more, I'd say. Considering more people that, you know, claim entitlements uh, are in work. Yeah. No, I understand. Let me see. Um, Joe Seacrest, on oh, none of that. Actually, do that. Bear with me, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else, because I know we can only go by what the Department of Work and Pension tell us, what the criteria is, you know, if we go... And, and, I, can't, that, and I can't even, I can't even change, you know, switch provider, because you, you're blocking me from doing that. What I get, or what you receive in total? Well, I have a, I have a lot to to cut, so I don't actually get what I'm given. If you know what I mean. Right. Because I'm forced to, I'm forced to pay uh, eighteen pound a week for my central eating, or for me hot water. That's a district eating charge. Yeah. But I can only I can only make use of that if I've got electric. Otherwise, you know, the thermostat that controls it all doesn't doesn't work. It doesn't, you know. There's no yeah. power to it, so therefore none of me eating comes through. So what's that one? That's not that one. I wonder if... <clears throat> yeah, I only get like £30 a week. Right, Um. you probably put that in your car. I don't even drive. Oh, good for you. I know what you mean. I, I, I know what you mean. It's a, I've just looked at what that is on a daily basis, just to have an idea. Have you spoken to the Department of Work and Pensions about your circumstances to see if there's any more you're entitled to? Yeah, probably along with, you know, millions of others. I know, but, you know, do you get um, council tax benefit and housing benefit? Yeah, but they're charging everybody out there so much, we've, we've got to pay so much. Everybody has to pay it now, don't they, so... Even though we get, you know, help we get, they, you know, we're forced to pay them as well. Due to cuts. So I can, I can only get this one more discount if I'm on ESA then, yeah? Uh, so it's a couple of things. I'll give you what you need to be on. So it's... So you're on Job Seekers Alliance at the moment. Yeah. The additional benefit would have to be something like incapacity benefit, disability living allowance, uh, if you've got children with you or born after 2009, or like child disability allowance and tax credit, or the other side is, incapa what is it? incapacity benefit or severe disablement allowance or right. employment and support allowance ESA. And then council tax benefit and housing benefit. So if you were getting an ESA with council tax and housing benefit, right. you could probably qualify for it. There'd be a higher chance of you qualifying for well, it. So, well, someone needs to be responsible for, you know, disconnecting me, because I'm going without these essential things. I don't know whether it's government or responsible or yourselves. While you've still got the prepayment meter there, they'll still see that you've got electric, you know. Yeah, but I have it never if, you know, I'm not able to actually get it to work. Yeah. It's not technically having electric, is it? Yeah. I'm not connected to the grid. So every time you top up, it's just taking the money for the, the balance, uh, for the debt recovery and things, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I had to fight last time because you were trying to add an extra two pound a week and, I, you know, I had to ring up and fight my case then because that would have, you know... Yeah. Probably took me off at face at planet, but you know that's when he recommended to apply for the warm home discount, which I've not been 
We proved off, so I don't know, I'm back to square one now. Yeah, I am. Um, and I've waited several months to hear back something from that. So at the moment, uh, there, there's literally nothing more I could do to, to try and help on that side. Um, let me have a thought. Uh, are, you, are you all right for a few minutes? Yeah. Let me have a look at that one. I want to get rid of that. And well, if the worst comes to worst, you, you're going to have to let me change provider so I can get a cheaper tariff. Because I'm missing out on um, on tariffs as well. I think the slight problem will be because of the, the balance that was possibly transferred over, until that's cleared, you know, it's going to be hard for them to try and get that money back at some no, well, point. Well, you're not going to be able to leave me disconnected like this and not allow me to... Switch provider. get more took, took out that was just one of the payments I'm making I'm making several more like so know. at the moment you uh, by the time you're finished you've got 30 pounds I, I get about 30 yeah just probably just a few pound about 34 pound a week 34 pound times tw uh, 52 176 so I'm very I'm very close to trigger line very close where you're not going to be able to take any more from me so as soon as soon as you start pushing over that trigger line, then you know I'm gonna have to do yeah take it a lot further. And is that the only income you have at the moment? Just doing well. I'm not I'm not in work, am I? So one seven six eight. Um, right. You know, and it's very hard when you can't even wake up and have a shower and yeah. You know, I'm not able to wash my clothes each day. It's gonna be like once a bleeding month or something like that, just to keep you know costs down. Yeah. To stretch myself through. Right. What Stupid. I'm doing at the moment is we've got like a priority assistance um, department. That, that they, what they do is we, they, they try and help customers make sure that, the, you know, if there's anything we can do financially or if we can do what they would... They, they so, kind of oh, what's this? Is this a third, third party company? No, no, it's internal. It's only to do with us and it's only run by us. Right. Okay, so it's not to do with a third third party company at all. Right. Right. What they do is I take some information about yourself, and as I go through, I'll advise you all the information I'm doing. You can say don't bother, but if it's something we can try and help you with, with your account, you know, it might free up some extra. You know, if we could free up some extra cash from our side that we're not taking, that might be able to give you a couple of quid electric. You know, that's a start. So what we do is we, they, not me personally, but our team, they assess your account. Yeah. Then they try and contact you. No. What they want to do, they will ask for information about your, the benefits you get, everything that comes in and out. No. And see, so they, they look at your personal situation. They don't kind of tar you with the same brush. It's an individual thing that they do for each customer. Right. Who we put forward for it. And it's all about us trying to help you. Okay. I know the warm home discount, because of the way it's set up, the criteria is quite specific. If it's not reached, we can't apply the money. Yeah, that's fair enough, yeah. But this other thing, this has nothing to do with the government. This is to do with us as a company. Right. Okay, so I'm going through some usage. So I know that on the 5th of January, um, whenever you topped up and things, we got some information from your meter. So I'm just going back to January 2014, hopefully, give or take a few days. Um, where is that? Perfect. So I've got that reading, so that's 1875. Uh, that's why I need my calculator, okay? Yeah. 2811 minus 1875, 936 units. 
parts of nut up times or sarts 0.12 here too. Charge that's going to be 365 times 0 0.2610, 365 times 0 0.2610, 2610, that's going to be 100, so that's going to be 220 pound, 220, your cost there, what else do I need to do? So, I'm having to work out your, uh, the percentage of your spending to your electric use, alright? Uh, is the cost of fit in the uh, the lunch cost of those are 12 months divided by household income. So, it's going to be 220 divided by 1768 times, what's that, 100? 12%. That's a start. That's positive. That's positive looking there. So, 12.44 so none of that one so I've got your household income I've worked out your percentage of electric you pay for and how much that is if it's over 10% it kind of helps us um, let's see get rid of that that's uh, confirmed right that's me Tom Saunderson uh Now, if we will try and contact you from this other department, okay? What is the best number for us to call you? No, uh, mobile. Your mobile. So that one you gave me earlier, that's not a problem. Seven, one, four, six, three. Right. Uh, I'm going to say these are. This is a, so it's all electric, this is a deep payment, and to have a look on that there. So will the, this other thing that you're putting me through, um, how will they be able to Offer me any help, any more help then. Right. The sort of help they offer, if they can, is they do, they call it a, a benefits MOT check. So they, they look at your situation, so they'll ask you everything about what you're claiming for. They'll check that you are getting everything you can get. Right. Okay. So these, this is quite a specific team, so they, they deal with this all the time. So they're going to make sure you're getting all the benefits you are entitled to. Okay. But if, if not, they'll advise you what you you could be applying for to help your cir your circumstances. Ah, well, they, they've told me everything that um, um, that's out of the air, so I've never applied for it all, so there's nothing else, so that's not going to help. No, it's not going to help. And the other side is, depending on your circumstances, your situation, anything like that, they can sometimes offer financial assistance, okay? In the sense that, in some cases, they can help put some, they can credit your account with some money to help clear some of the balance. So but, the, but this is an ongoing thing, it's not just a... Yes. A one-off, is it? This is, a, this is happening to me every, every week. No, so at the moment, you would still have to be putting in a couple of pounds into your meter as and when you can, okay? But no. what they do, for, from our side of the business, they look at how much money you owe on your account. So you are on a prepayment meter and you are slowly paying the, the recovery rate as and when you can through yeah. the meter. So what they then do is look at how much your, your income is, what is the, you know, they weigh up all the options, what's the, what's the time scale for you to try and clear that balance? They, I'm just going on the limited information I have. They can sometimes, you know, look at your search stances and think, right, well we uh, could... How long, how long has this, has this been in operation, this thing, what you're talking about? Um, only a few months. It, it yeah. comes and goes, because it, it doesn't run all the time. 
Does it run all the time? It doesn't happen all the time. It opens up for a few months at a time and then closes down, only because they get such an influx of requests from advisors, okay? No. So, it's just me trying to put you forward to see if we as a company can help with anything on your account. But this is temporary though, you're just trying to palm me off with some temporary, you know... It's not temporary, it's... Well it is, because you said it comes and goes, that's, that's not good to me, I mean, and what, would it, what would be necessary for me to, you know, prevent me from being disconnected is to just completely remove them standard ch charges completely. Well, that's not down to me, this department can sometimes do that. Well, that's what that's what it's going to need because it's that what's causing me. At the end of the day, the the prepayment me is designed to you know stop me from getting into debt. It's, tra it's designed to try and get me out of debt, but it's doing the complete opposite. Now, unless you can justify that it's doing what you claim it to do, then you've basically put something in under false pretenses. You know, you told me something that no, isn't uh, the case. There's, there's no false pretenses there. It so how how is that prepayment getting me out of debt when I can't have no electric when it prevents me from using it? In order to get yourself out of debt, you have to be using it, because you'd still be using the electric as normal, and then it would be taking an amount each week to start clearing your arrears. But if you're not topping it up, and obviously for the reasons you've given me, it then becomes quite difficult because you still have a meter, it still needs to be paid for. Yeah, so, um, so how is that getting me out of debt? As I said, if you're paying for it on a week-to-week -week basis in, in the practice, then over a period of time so you'll you, then... So, you, what do you, what do you, uh, so how come is it everybody expects people to um, keep up with the, you know, with the bills and that? And what, what, what do you want to do? Walk around like skeletons? No, that's not what we're saying. But it's all about just being able to maintain it. And you've advised me with your circumstances it's very difficult for you to keep on, you know... Maintain. Right, so I'm still waiting for you to justify how it's meant to do what you claim it to do. I just did. I don't believe you did. I didn't hear any justification within anything you just said. Okay. If you had a credit meter in, yeah. you would still have to pay for your usage and the debt. Yeah. So, say for example, you owed £500. It doesn't give me the amount that is outstanding on your account the way it's set up, right? Yeah. If you were using £100 a month, I would say to you, sir, you use £100 a month, we could spread that £500 outstanding over 12 months, Five by 12, that would be an extra £42, so we would be expecting you to pay £142 a month direct debit, for example. Whereas you're on a prepayment meter, it takes it off weekly at a couple of pounds, so it takes a longer time to clear, but then you're still using your electric, paying an extra couple of pounds to clear your balance. But what am I, what, what, why are you charging, why are you forcing a vulnerable person to pay a charge, a standing charge, at what point, what is a standing charge actually for? Standing charge, we charge all customers standing charge. But what's it for, what is the payment for? It's for the maintenance of the meter, the network, to keep the national database up to date, to pay for everybody that's involved. But are, are you not responsible for your own finance, finances in that? Yeah. So why, why are you passing it on to your vulnerable customers? We don't, every, vulnerable or not, every customer gets one. It's regardless of if they're so it, and it's five pound a week or two hundred pound. So a week. do you not think that that's you know creating vulnerable customers? No. It's we're treating all customers the same. So, so okay, fair enough. So, at what point does it stop? Uh, which mate? What do you mean? I mean, how close to the human rights do you have to get before you you know you decide to put your prices down? So we've gone from me trying to help you, and you're having a bit of a go at me now. Well, yeah, I'm. I'm asking. I'm not having a go at you. I've been, I've been I mean, trying to help you. Yeah, I mean, you're sat, you're sat doing the job, so I'm asking you questions. That's all I'm doing. Fine. I mean, I'm trying to help you to see if we can get any of the balance owing yeah. to your account. I, I personally can't do that. If I could, I would more I'm than... Not ask, I'm not asking you to personally do it. I'm <laughs> ringing you because, you know, you're the one who's employed to deal with these calls. I know. If you, if you feel that's unfortunate, then I'm sorry I can't... I mean, we charge about that. customer standing charge regarding our costs. They are set by our finance team who, that's how they justify it. Unfortunately, because of your circumstances... But how can you, you've just said to me that you're responsible for your own finances. 
my own personal finances. I'm not yes. talking about your personal finances. I'm talking about the company. Oh, the company. That's what they do as a business. They have to work out. You know, they have overheads to pay. It all comes down to to standard business practice. You can't run a business on negative profit, or it would never exist. It would end up being bailed out by a government or another company. What? What? When when the company is getting eight billion pound dividends? Yes, but that's passed on to shareholders. That's also passed on to the people who work for the company. It's not like it's just eight billion pound. It all goes back into the market. It all goes back into the local economies. Right. So, uh, so yeah, I'm still waiting for you to tell me at what point does it stop. I mean, at, at this rate, you're going to kill all your customers off. So, what, what? I mean, they're not going to survive another winter if you keep putting your prices up. Well, we haven't said we're increasing our prices at all. In fact, what we've said is all our prices uh, currently. Well, that's that's to, to to the people. I'm talking about me right now. I mean, you've you stopped me from changing to another supplier, so I can't make advantage of other tariffs, cheaper yeah. offers. You've got me on a prepayment meter. That just sucks the life out of me. Leaves me with no electricity. You don't class that as being disconnected. So you can't justify that either. We're not going to be disconnecting you though. So how, how can how define disconnection? Okay, if you're not topping up then you've got no electric, but we're not sending someone out to come out and No 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 meter. no 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 no. I'm topping up. Yeah. It's not that I'm not topping up, I'm topping up. Believe me, I'm topping up and I'm still not getting no electric. So you would have to be topping up then each week effectively. Do you know how much your minimum payments were to cover? Was it two pound? It was uh, it was two pound, and then it, you added one pound ninety something for the standing charge, and then you tried to get another two pound out of me. So it was just under. It would have been just under um, just under six pound. So if we if we keep it at the two pound that you you're still paying at the moment. Well, that's the only thing I ever agreed to. I never give consent for anything else. Right. But because you're trying to do things like add another two pound, then you're going against the original contract of what I agreed to to put this prepayment meter in my house. Right. So at the moment, it's still two pound, regardless if they've tried to increase it or not. It's still two pound, yeah. It's still two pound, yeah. Plus the right. plus the standing charge. Plus the standing charge of one ninety seven. So each week it costs you what's that? Three pound ninety seven. Yeah. So you would have to be topping up a minimum each week if you went with no electric. Three pound ninety seven. Okay. Yeah. If you want to keep on top of it to you know so it doesn't go backwards. Yeah, but when you've only got thirty pound a week and you've yeah. got to you've got to you know get your food and all your other things that you need. I mean, electric's not the only bill I've got, you know. Of course not. Of course not. I've got my council tax to consider, which you know that's a serious thing. So I uh, I don't I don't understand exactly how you cust how you're gonna remain to have customers if you know you're leaving them without electric or you're forcing them to not pay the council tax so they end up getting put in prison or some, or they avoid the T V license and then they get a fine. I mean I don't understand what you, what you what everybody's up to. Right, I'm just working out roughly how much you would need to pay a week. So I'm only going by the facts with meter readings and the charges, alright? Over the last year it works out to be 1,700, no that's the wrong one, Tom, try that again, what did I put, 936, 936, divided by 365, over the past, over the past two years, three years, I've been going without a fridge freezer, three, uh, you try living without a fridge freezer, let's see how long you get you last, oh no I understand, I have been in a position where it's been that awful, and it's, it's, it's blooming hard, okay, no, I know that. It, it's not even hard, it's just ridiculous, I'll be honest. I didn't like it and I hated it. But I'm trying to help... But is it necessary, is it justified, uh, that's what I'm trying to get to, is it justified to torture your customers in this way? But we're not, we're, we're trying to make sure, I mean, what would you prefer, that we kept the, the, the previous meter in so you ran up even more debt? Well, at least I'm still alive to at least pay it off. Well, I mean, do you want somebody out of me or not? Do you, do, you, do you want to kill me off with debt I've got, or do you want me to at least stick around for a bit so I can pay it off? I mean, we've got to be realistic. We can't just talk money, money, money all the time. We have to be realistic. I know. Do you know... At the end of the day, you may, you may see me as a corporation, but I'm still a human being. I know that. Right, so let's try and sort some out and negotiate. Right. right, so do you want to know, based on roughly what you've used, 
over the last year and moving forward on a week to week basis, you're using about two and a half units a day, which as you've said, you don't even have a fridge freezer or anything in at the moment, right? So that's just using a little bit of lighting, that's just very, very minimal, right? So I can see where it's being used, but right. that's what, say that's three, oh, I'm going to put it as 2.5 times 0.1282, 32 and 5%, so you're using about... Take away the £2 for the collection, you know, the payment, the 197 for standing charge, on a daily basis you're using 32 pence times 7, that's £2.35, let's work that out, £2 add 197, 97 add 2, add 2.35, so each week approximately you would have to be topping up about £6.30 to get to, to be on the minimum amount possible. That means you would be paying the two pounds. Yeah, but you're not understanding how I'm living by doing I'm doing that because I'm I'm having to sacrifice a lot of stuff. A whole lot of stuff. You don't understand. You're just saying, oh, I'm only using a bit, so there you go, I can manage. But oh, you don't understand what I'm going without to do that. Like washing my clothes once a month, having a shower, you know, once every two weeks. You don't understand. It's so, alright, you were saying, yeah, one point, blah, blah, blah. But you're not taking into consideration my day to day basis, are you? They can't understand, Charles. I mean, what more? you like me to do for you? I mean, is there anything I can help you with? I mean, I Well, that's why I'm I ringing for you to tell me yeah. that. I mean, am I doing your job here or are you... I, I, I've told you what I can do, what I've put you forward through. I'm, you and know... You've not, you've not told me how they can help. You just said you're just going yeah, to basically tell you, me what I already have. They do one of two things. It's down to the department if they can offer the assistance, firstly. After that, they either try and help you to make sure you, you're getting all the you know, the financial help you can, I mean, I know you've advised me that you have tried and there's nothing more at the moment, or sometimes, in my experience on certain accounts, they help with the balance that's outstanding, which means, in your sense, possibly, if they were able to help with that, it would either reduce it or clear it, so you wouldn't have this chasing you all the time. If they, you know, Positively, if they were able to clear the so that's, a, that's, a long, that's a long term thing what you're talking about. Yeah, but if they were able to right? clear the balance... But that's when it's available. You said, it, you said it comes and goes, so it's not always going to be available to me. Now what I'm talking about is how, 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 are gonna, how are we going to prevent or put a stop to this prepayment meter making me go without electric and going without central eating? You can. You can There is no way for us to stop that. That has to be topped up. Well, we, well we, we, we believe differently. So I don't know what training you'll be provided. So what do you believe differently? Cause I, believe, I believe what you guys are doing is unlawful and, and illegal. And illegal and under human rights you shouldn't be doing it. Well, unfortunately... Now, you know, somebody in your company needs to take responsibility there for me being disconnected and not able to use the electric. So where would you say your responsibility stops? Because if you couldn't pay your bills previously... That would have been your responsibility. Right, so that's what I'm trying to get to, whether it's the government's responsibility or if it's you, yeah, me and your provider's responsibility. If you weren't able to keep up with your bills previously, yeah. that's your responsibility. We then have a responsibility as a company to try and reclaim those costs back at an agreed amount over a period of time, which off German, it's down to but, off but, German, but, but, since I, but since I've been, you know, with with um, SSA, none of that's ever happened. I've never been offered anything. What have you not been offered? I've never been offered any any assistance. I mean, as far as I'm aware, making a vulnerable person, you know, suffering the way I have, shouldn't should never have happened, and nobody's done anything about it. So. But how would you say you're vulnerable? In in what senses would you, would you say you're vulnerable? So you don't see me going without electric and central heating is not, not classed as vulnerable, no? That is one of them. Right, so do I need to say any more or do you want me to carry on? It kind of does help because 
it helps us try and help you, but I've given everything I can, regardless if you... Well, what do you mean? You just told me that you understand what it's like, you've been there before, so what exactly do you want me to tell you? Well, as a company side, it's just so we ha so we know, but if you're saying that's all you want to give me, fine. No, I'll give you... What, what, what do you want to draw in? Um, how many ghost pimples I've got in this game? Do you want me to tell you exactly no, you know, no. how, how much I'm shivering and things like that? Is that what you want? That, that wouldn't be... Is that unnecessary? Right. So you're going without heating, you're... You've explained your circumstances then. Yeah. At the moment. And that's and that is not helping me get out of the situation. I'm not able to, you know, go out and look for work because I can't get my clothes. The yeah, right clothes ironed and cleaned and you know, I can't keep my hygiene up to be able to do these things and it's affecting me you know, I'm getting depressed by going through all this. Let me think. Give me one moment. Not going anywhere, I'm just keeping you on the line, so while I Look for something. This has been, no, it's been going on for too long now, many years. And I know for a guaranteed fact that the people that aren't on, you know, who haven't got the mental capabilities that I've got, and, you know, the, the will to carry on, I could just realise the amount of thousands of people that have gone already based on this. Right. And, and you can't tell me anything different because I know. I don't class myself as that strong and I've gone through hell. So those that are weaker than me, they, 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 they surely can't be around anymore. I mean, I, I weigh less than eight stone. I mean, what do you want me to drop to? With the prepayments, they are, like, as all the energy companies are governed by Ofgen, right? Yeah. So they are the government. Effectively, that's who they are, right? They are an intermediary from the government. That they make the rules and they say literally jump, and we jump until they say that's high enough. Listen, do uh, listen, do you think I've not been through them? Right. So, regarding the prepayment side, we have set it up to try and help you prevent yourself going further into debt. That's the, that is the principle of it. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me get through this a minute. Um, have you considered as a, and this is, this is going outside of the company, so, and I'm just trying to think, have you tried using citizens and citizens' advice? Yeah. They can't help me with anything financial, they can only offer some advice, the same advice that you pretty much told me, which doesn't offer me anything at all. Uh, none of that one. Um, I've been to them all, mate, you can't tell me anything that I haven't tried unless it's just opened up and I don't know about it. But other than that, you've got everybody, all your customers in, in some stalemate deadlock sort of thing where you're just waiting for them to pop off. We don't, because... Well, you can't tell me anything other, mate, because that's what's happening. Do you not keep a check on the amount of people that have gone over at winters? In the winter, no customer gets cut off from... Cut, cut off? I'm not just talking about being cut off, mate. I'm on about losing their life, do you know what I mean? I'm not on about getting cut off now. I'm on about getting cut off completely from the, you know, the whole game of things. Yeah. Do you know, do, do you realise the statistics on that? And it's not just, yeah. beca it's not just because they're old people. I know young people, it happens to, it doesn't matter age, gender, race, it doesn't matter. It, it all well, at the end of the day, you, you've, not, you've not provided anywhere for anybody to go to to get any sort of, you know, refuge from it all. So, at the end of the day, customers have just got to pressure you guys to do it, to do what's needed to be done. Yeah. Same as we go and pressure as MPs, do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. It's still a democracy, is it not? Are you alright to hold the line while I go and chase up someone a minute? Say again, sorry? Are you alright to hold the line for a few minutes while I go and find some more advice with one of some more colleagues? Yeah, sure, yeah. Right, yeah. Hello. Hello, the sir. Right. There's two options we have then for you. Right. One is, we can come and remove the prepayment meter and cap the supply, so your property will be without supply permanently, therefore you won't be using it, but there will still be, we then will send out, uh, we'll send out reminder letters to say you still have a balance to pay, which then would be followed up in the normal due course. Right. Okay. Or the other option 
is if you're able to speak to a supplier of your choice and ask them if they're willing to take on your debt. I've already done that and you refused them to. Were they ex willing to accept yep. your debt? Yep. Right, let me grab that other then. Are you still on? Sorry about that. Right, I've got some more information. Right, as it stands, they've advised me that if you want to change supplier and you can find a company that's willing to take on your debt as well, then yeah. they cannot see a reason why it will not leave. Okay? Well, that has been the case. So, I would try again, speak to an energy supplier of your choice, they're probably going to want to know how much debt is left on the meter. Yeah, but when they apply for it, whatever department deals with that just refuses them. Uh, because it's a prepayment meter, it doesn't give me any information to say that it's ever been rejected before, but it doesn't, they don't always stay on there. So, there is a possibility that, say, you spoke to Smith's Energy Supplies tomorrow, and uh, you say, right, I've got, I, I don't know, because you'd have to go to your meter and check this. I'm using this as an example. I've got £300 debt on my account. Would you be willing to take that over? Okay? Right. So if they said yes, then you can arrange with them to take the supply from us. They will advise us that they're going to take it and they'll accept the debt as it is. Okay, and then you just then pay them on a week-to-week -week basis through your meter at whatever agreed amount. Okay? So I'm paying, so I'm not paying you the debt anymore? You wouldn't be paying us the debt anymore, you'd be paying your new supplier. So I'm taking it up there buying the debt? Yeah, effectively, yes. What do you mean effectively? Do I owe you this money or don't I owe this money? That's what I mean, yes. They would be taking the debt from us and putting it with them, so they would pay us their outstanding amount, and then after that date, you would then be paying your new company for your electric, plus a little bit of outstanding balance that they've transferred over, okay? Yeah, okay. So there's that one. My colleague did give me a few other options. These are charities that help, help people. You don't have to be a customer of them. They are a, an independent charity that help customers who are having difficulties with their, you know, paying their bills and things. So, have you got a pen and paper to hand? Yeah, I have, yeah. Have you heard, now this was a new one to me, British Gas Trust. Yeah, I've heard of it. No good. No good. Right. Um, have you tried using any of the local charities? Because I know sometimes there's little charities out there that will help you. Well, Not just, you know, food banks or things like that, but what I mean is financially. Nobody gives you money. There's charities out there that will look at your case and sometimes are able to financially help. Which ones are these then? So you'd have to look for them in your local area. Ah, right, okay. So you're getting me to look for something that you don't even know is there. Wait, give me a sec and I'll jump on the internet right now. That one there. Um... That one there, that we do. So I'm just putting the help with my energy bills. Alright, fair enough. Um, let me just see, bear with me a moment, okay? I mean, if citizens advice don't know about it, I'm going to be very surprised if you do. I'd be surprised why citizens advice don't know about it, because we've got lots of, there's lots of charities come through to us saying we're dealing with Mr. and Mrs. Smith's account for this period of time. This is what we're doing, and we do get a lot of it. It's not like I'm trying to fob you off here. I'm trying to, you know, help you any way I can. Um, that one there. Let me click on that. Um, see what that brings up for me. But you're not actually dealing with the root problem. You just... What, what can I deal with the root problem? You, put, you have you a prepayment meter. You put me down in an imaginary path. It's not imaginary. No, well, it is, because we have yet to prove if it even exists. Okay, so I, I, I'm making things up for what reason? It doesn't I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you're making it up. I'm saying until you can back it up, then it doesn't exist. It does exist. Well, maybe to you it does, but it it's, that's not... It's within the company. We pay people to contact our vulnerable customers and discuss the, their needs, the, the state of their accounts, and try and help them. So it's not a, a made-up thing. It's not just me backing anything up. I'm trying to help you. 
there's any way we can to get you out of this debt. So A, you're not having to pay any money towards the debt. And then anything you do then put on your meter is just for yourself, nothing mm. for us, okay? Um, other scheme, right, bear with me, I'm just trying to read it. So, where is this? Winter fuel, no. Mobile payments, no. Warm front. Let me think. Not that one. Energy assistance, not that one. What do they do? Wait, the customer out. Uh, if I want to find more about. Uh, done that one. I'm just clicking on some of the links to try and see if we can do this, okay? Alright. Uh, well, that's no good. And this was a bit of a random one, my colleague told me. Certain police authorities. A little bit, this one threw me, this is a new one to me. If, for example, you were to go phone up your local police authority and say, look, I'm really struggling with my electric payments, is there any way you can help me? Sometimes they give out vouchers for five or ten pounds to help, like, people in their area. That was a new one to me, but apparently it does exist. Uh, where is this? Right, let me try. Let me pop in your postcode. S I one. understand that, that's what I'm um, doing. Uh, d d d d not that one. But there's no other main point of call than the actual supplier I'm with. Give me a load of forms to fill in, I filled them all in, I sent them back, I, I didn't qualify. So that's basically that, with that. Same right. as warm on discount, I imagine. Uh, which option? Uh, that's not that one. And do, they, do they not only just, do they not just deal with gas? Is it, it's not electric? They, do, they deal with both. Um, because it's a, a charity trust, they, they can deal with gas and electric. So it doesn't really matter what supply it is. Uh, do you need, is that the one? That uh, was that, well, none of that. Try.
put this through. Uh, let's see. You're on about the um, winter fuel. Yeah. I don't get that. Uh, I'm eligible for that. Eligible for that. There's nothing out there I'm eligible for. I'll tell you now. If you can find anything, then please try. But I mean, I've not even had to ask people. I've just had to figure it out myself. Yeah. If there's anything, and that'll be because I've been living like this for you know x amount of years. It's the reason why I know what these are out there, and there's yeah. nothing. Right, there is one called, um, right, so the Energy Retail Association represents energy suppliers to set up the Home Heat Helpline. It is a free national helpline for vulnerable customers having difficulties paying their fuel bills. So there is a number, it's a free phone number I can give you. Alright. And it's 0800. Yeah. 33. Yeah. 66. Yeah. 99. Okay. That's the Energy Retail Association, so they, it's a free national help time for vulnerable customers having difficulties to pay their bills, and that, I'm literally looking at that number on the Off-Gem website, okay? Um, so that's where I find that one. And uh, what, do they, what sort of help do they offer? Let me see if it lets me click on the link. <laughs> Oh, 
National Energy Action is the National Tribal Team to target fuel property campaigns for investment energy, blah, blah, blah. That's sort of what we want. Let's see what they can do. Which is advice as anybody else, really, which is nothing. I mean, Something else, is it? No, no, I mean, fair enough. I mean, you've been more than patient tonight. I mean, like I said, if you spoke to another, I mean, if you no, want the number. Never enough, I've been on this film, yet. Yeah, no, I know, I am quite aware. As I said er, about 20 minutes ago, if you decide to change supplier and your new supplier will accept the debt, then they will take over the supply, you'll go to them, and then they, they pay us what's outstanding, then credit, you then they put it on your meter and then you move it at a different, you know, you pay them, then you also get the electric at a lower rate. So, as far as I've been advised, you can change as long as your new supplier is willing to, to take on the debt. Right. So, give that a shot, um, whoever your supplier of choice might be, and see how it goes. And I mean, the notes will be on the account tonight to say that we've been chatting about it and all the other issues that have come up tonight. So, it is there. Okay? Other than that, I mean, if you really wanted us to, we could come out and remove the meter for you, but it would still mean that someone along the line would be sending out reminder letters for you to have to still pay the balance. But that's a bit extreme, I personally think. Well, I don't really need to go down that route anyway, even though it is available, because as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's what's happening and what's, what's being done to me is wrong, so... I mean, you can put me onto another provider, but they're still going to have to take responsibility. Yeah, they're going to take responsibility of the balance, it just means you still have to try and pay that. Yeah. But as I said, I mean, I know you probably don't have much faith in what I've been saying about this assistance fund. It is only something I can refer your account, which in effect is you, to, to them. And if they can help, they will tell you. If they can't, then at least we have tried. It's not what I'm trying to say, right? It, it all well, well, everything you tell me, you you miss one thing out, which is that you are actually able to remove the standing charge completely, even though you are telling me you're not. No, as a company, we have decided that all customers pay a standing charge. Yeah, but under certain circumstances, you are able to remove it. No, we can't. You are. I've been told that you are. By who? I've been told from, um, is it the uh, the Ofgem? Yep. So Ofgem have given companies... And they also, they also told me that the standing charge is just to simply make your bills easier to read. Right. They don't really go into anything to do with maintenance and that because... Okay. Now, off Gem have put, made it clear, this was back to, to do with... I don't, have, I don't have any bills, I just have statements and yeah. summaries, I don't have bills. Okay. So what am I paying okay. standing charge for? Because we have, the company as a whole has made a decision that all customers pre-pay a standing charge. 
Yeah, but for what reason? That's what I'm trying to get round to reason. Uh, yeah, what, what, what you told me is not what Ofgem told me. Well, the reason we charge standing charge is not only A, because we have to record your meter, you know, for the electric you use, but if that breaks down, we have to replace that, we have to pay for that to be fixed. All Everything has a cost associated to it. So if we don't charge you standing charge, then we have to increase our unit rates. Right, but what I'm trying to say to you is, how can it break down? I mean, are you, are you not responsible for providing a service that's, you know, fit for purpose? It is fit for purpose. So if a machine doesn't work, then it's not fit for purpose, so why does the customer have to pay for it? Well, you know the electric supply cable that goes into the meter? Yeah. That has to still be maintained, so if that breaks down, that has to be fixed. So, 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 so what you're saying is that you've got to sign up to some sort of insurance thing? It's not an insurance thing. All so then what is it? I mean, how, how many often times does it, the main cable need repairing? Right. Because it's the, the whole, the, the way the industry is split up, and you're aware of that, it's all it's generator, distributor, biller. Compartmentalised, yeah. yeah. It's all been split. With the supply part of the business, that has to be treated separately as a different company. So, if something breaks down, that has to be paid for, you know. If it's not paid on a standing charge, then customers' rates that they pay then have to then increase to cover the charges. So, it, it's one way or another, it all has to be covered for. You know, if, if you have a, a mobile, if you had a landline at your property, you wouldn't ask, you, you wouldn't have a, you wouldn't just have the phone line itself. You wouldn't pay zero what is it, zero standing charge? Yeah, well, listen, mate, if, if I had a phone line with like an internet connection and then all of a sudden, you know, I didn't have my internet connection based on not being able to pay, then you can't really say I've still got it. I know, but it's, so, it's the same principle applies. You know, if you have a, a, a contracted phone, you still pay a line rental on it. it. Everything has line rental at some point. You know, you can't just say, well, I don't want that. No. Uh, yes, Ofgem have said if uh, we wanted to, we could have a zero standing charge. That is correct. But as a company, they've chosen not to go down that route to make it simpler and clearer for customers. Yeah, but, they, but they've also they've also said that you can, you know, not only are you, is it your choice to actually go ahead and put the standing charge on, you have got the power to take it away under exceptional circum circumstances. I have never known it in the last 18 months to ever be well, wavered. Well, it's not going to happen, is it? Because you don't want a thing to kick off. You don't want it trending. But that is the actual facts. No. Nope. Now, you're either refusing to class me as exceptionally, you know, in exceptional circumstances, or you're just refusing to accept the fact that you're actually able to do it. Which one is it? Right. We've made a business decision that the standing charge sticks for all customers. Even those under exceptional circumstances. I have never yet seen it in the 18 months. You've never come across anybody under exceptional circumstances? No. Is that because they die before they actually get to tell you that? No. Or? no. I've got other complaints regarding standing charges, so it is, I do have other issues regarding it as well. So, at the moment, there's, there's no one I know in this company would waiver the standing charge. Alright, well, I'll, I'll file a freedom of inform information request in on that and see what, what comes back. That's fine, but as you said, Ofgem have said we can charge a zero standing charge if we want to. But as a company, we've decided not to, so when customers try and compare the energy market, they know exactly what they're paying for. So all the costs are up front, they're not hidden, they are what they are, and it is there. No, no, when, I, when I accepted the, the meter, the standing charge came on after. It, I was, I didn't have the standing charge when I, when I, you know, made an agreement to have that prepayment meter installed. So it's only because it came, it came out after, is why I, I'm trapped in this position. If it, if it had been out at the time, I wouldn't have allowed you to put a prepayment in. So that's how long ago is that? Is that over two years ago now? Yeah, probably, yeah. Right. So, this has changed because Ofgem have brought in the rules. So, it may have been at one point, have you ever heard of a no standing charge tariff? No. Right. It used to be you would pay so much at one rate of electric and then so much at a discounted rate, okay? Yeah, that's what it used to be, I think. Right. So, in essence, 
you were still paying a standing charge, it's just that the costs were incorporated into the unit rates. So I'm still paying it even though you call it a no standing charge? Yeah, that, that was always ongoing yeah. for years and years and years, and Ofgem decided that so it's not very fair for customers to try and understand or compare utility providers, so they said, right, we want to bring in a standing charge, but then you have to get rid of the no standing charge um, rates on the, the unit rates, so it made it easier for customers to compare. So it mean that you, you, just made, you just made things look different, well, that's all you've done. No. No, nothing's changed, you're still doing exactly the same thing. So, where do we stand tonight then? Well, uh, that's what I'm trying to say to you, if you can't... Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely put that Freedom of Information request and prove, prove my point that there's more than what you're making out. So, as a company, we have been told by Ofgem we can charge a standing charge. They haven't said, you know, and yes, they said we can decide to put it as zero if we want to. But as a company, to make it fair for all customers... Yeah, and they've, and they've also said you can waive it as well, but you're, you're denying that. I'm not saying we're denying it, I'm saying I've never seen it happen. Well, I'm worried about seeing it happen, I'm worried about what Ofgem have said. Well... Well, you're saying that you don't do that, you don't... The reason why you've never seen it happen is because you don't do that. But you can do that, so I want to know the reason why you won't. Well, we won't because at the end of the day it still has to be paid for one way or another. But that shouldn't be, that's not the responsibility for a, you know, a vulnerable cu customer in exceptional circumstances. That's, what, that's the whole point of what this call is about, is you're forcing, you know, somebody to suffer beyond, you know, the, their own, go beyond their own human rights in order to make a payment. How is it going beyond your human rights? And in, in what way are we... Because it is, because you want people to go without electric and heating. So, so then they've got to sacrifice food and other things like that in order to keep that meter topped up. I don't understand why you struggle to get your head around it, I really don't. I don't struggle to get my head around it at all. But you can't just say we're impacting on your human rights. Well, why not? But we're not. It, but you have freedom to do what you like. You, have, as I've advised, you have freedom to change supplier as long as. Right, I've got a right to be connected to the grid. Right. Right. Do you, do, right do you agree? Do you agree? Let's just do with one thing at, at once. Right. I have a right to be connected to the grid. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So if all these charges, what you're what you put you're putting onto me, and I've got to pay him right, leaves me without no electric in the end, then I might as well not be on the grid. Right. So if I've got to then. If I'm going to beg you t to take me off the grid, then where's my right to be on the grid? I don't have a right, do I? The only time I have a right is when I suffer and go without food, and then that goes against my human rights, because I've got a right to eat. I've also got a right to have a family life. Okay, so... But I can't have any sort of family you life. Because would you then agree that you should be entitled to free electric, because that's your human right? Not exactly as you put it, but there's certain places in the world where that d did happen, yeah, and still does to this day. So, yeah. Places, places like in Libya, where they never paid for electric, every person who lived in Libya before they took Gaddafi out... Okay, had free we're had free in the UK. I'm, I'm, I know, but you're telling me about human rights and humans are all, all around this planet, so... Because we're stopping you using electric because you can't afford to pay for it, you think we should... Based on, based, on a standing you based on the standing charge that's causing it. It's not the standing charge that's causing you're getting it. Me to, you're getting me to pay to maintain something I can't use. A service that I'm not being provided with and I, 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 I don't know how much more you want me to explain to you before you understand. How can, how can I be forced to pay to maintain something I'm not able to use? Whether I want to or not, I'm not able to. So what am I maintaining? You're maintaining to use the meter. I'm not using, I'm using it, what, to, to have courtesy of paying me debt? So I'm paying a standing charge to pay me debt? Alright, if that's the case, then send me a paper bill and I'll pay, I'll pay it by card. I'll pay my bills by card. Payment card. And I'll, and I'll get off this key. Right, that would... Because I'm not paying a standing charge to pay my debt. Okay, and if you went on to a, the, the other type of meter you had where you could pay weekly, monthly, whatever, you would still have a standing charge. 
So whether you're on a prepayment. Yeah, but then it goes back to it goes back to you know paying for maintaining a service, which you told me the standing charges for. Yeah. But if I'm not able to use that service, then why should I be forced to maintain it? So in essence, in essence, then to my remove the meter and you'll pay what's outstanding over on a card then. But then you would have no electric. Well, that's exactly because you've been I've been forced off the grid, a grid that I have a right to be on. Okay. Regardless. How do we then get past this point because you're... Make it possible for people to pay and it's not about, you know, putting your prices up all the time. I mean, £8 billion dividends and you're telling me you can't afford to maintain stuff. Right. Like the customer has to do it. I'm going to say you're a very clever guy. Did you know, you know did, what you're did, did you know there's 900, 000, over 900,000 customers who are suffering with a standing charge? 900,000. 900, over 900,000. Yes. Right, so when you're, talk, when you're talking to me, just just imagine that you're talking to 900,000 other people. And it's made clear on their bills. And if customers don't like that, then... It wasn't made, no, it wasn't made clear at the time on mine when I got the pre-permit meter installed because it wasn't even on the contract or the agreement that I signed. And then because Ofgem brought out new rules, we then had to... Yeah, that's made it, that's made it a government thing where I can't, I can't fight it because yeah. it's been approved by government, it's been recommended by them. For you to do it. And so we we have followed their their rule to a T. Yeah, but then so it boils down. So how much do you care about your customers? We care about them a lot, but we also, you know, we, there's only so much we can do to help customers. That right. So you, so but so so you're leaving it to get to the point where the customer is not going to be around to able to even have a service or pay a bill. Now that's losing your customer. I don't see how that is beneficial to your business. It's not, but at the end of the day, because you had an outstanding balance, that also has to be paid for as well. I mean, if you didn't... If you when, I, when, I, when I joined SSC, mm -hmm. uh, at the time it was going back a few years, but um, you made some, some error in, I don't know what, it, what offer it were at the time, and I, I fell under that category, I don't know if you know, if you can remember anything about this, and you issued letters out to all your customers. Wanting to know if when when it were that they signed up. Now I was one of them, and I never heard anything from it. So that would have been down to that would have been a couple of years ago. Let me that was being yeah, it'd been quite a few years ago, yeah. And I joined within that space of time. So I were on wrong. I were, I were being overcharged since day one anyway. So the reason why I've got this debt is because I was overcharged. Well, I'm not bothered. I'm not going to dispute what, you know, what the actual amount is. Because at the end of the day, I'm struggling to pay any of it. So I'd rather at least get me in a position where I can pay and then I'll discuss how much I owe. Yeah. But at a minute, I'm not going to, going to do things back to front. So there's just no point. Give me a second. I'm just looking through some other notes at the moment, okay? All right. I can't say much more about that thing that happened a couple of years ago because I, I only just joined the company as that was coming in. Okay. Um, well, I want to open. Oh, well, as far as I'm concerned, we've been robbed anyway. It's not, you know, over the past few years, but over decades since it all got privatised. So I look at it as everything's double dipping. You've already been paid. You've got no right to charge any customer. I mean, this is how I look at things. Right. Now the law obviously looks at differently. So. Or legals, should I say, the legalese look differently. So as it is a business, so, and I'm just going to be very clinical about it, okay? We're running I, a business. I think, uh, me personally, I think it should all be renationalised. And. You know, give back to people. Okay, and if you renationalise it, it still has to run as a business to make money. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't run as a, it's nothing, nothing in the government runs to make money. So you would run all the energy companies at a loss? No, you don't, why would you run it at a loss? Who are you, you paying? run it for break even, Who are you paying? Any, for anything. Energy can be free, have you heard of an hydrogen cell unit? Okay, but we're not discussing that right now. Yeah, but have you, heard, have you heard of it? It's free, yes. electric's free, your wind power, your wave power, it's all free, you've just got to harness it and store it and sell it to your customers, that's all it's about. And do you know the technology it's... Uh, the reason why, the reason why you got you, you the business exists and, and you've got the job you're doing is because people in this country aren't responsible, so they need a nanny, a state to look after them. 
Right, but because the state couldn't do the job right, they sold it off. But well, there's another story to that, anyway. Yeah, that but that's that's that. that. Add that is is you know high treason for a start. So now I want to ask you, and I'm I'm going to be very open about it. Okay, I'm, I'm trying not to you know. I I do understand where you're coming from, and I understand your plight. Okay, it, how you come through tonight is a complaint, regardless of whatever way I log it. It, can, it is a complaint now. I can pass you to a manager if you want to try and escalate it because like you said, you want us to waive the standing charge. That is something that is out of my remit. I can then es escalate you to a manager going that way, put you through our procedures. If you're saying it can be done in exceptional circumstances, then the only way to do this is to get... Well, the point in having his human rights if it, if it, you know, if it doesn't do anything. I mean, it's all from Magna Carta, but nobody knows about Magna Carta these days. So nobody even complains about it because they feel like they're traps. So they take the best and easy solution and just end it. So, would you like to speak to a manager then? Please, I yeah. mean, I've covered everything. I mean, you're looking about getting the standing charge waivered. Yeah. That is past, like I said, that is something that I physically cannot do. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, you can only do what you've been trained to do, haven't you? All you do is just follow procedure. Yeah, and I mean, it can go up through the procedures to the point where either you get a resolution or off GM get involved. They make a final decision um, whether you, you you can agree to it or not if it got to that point. Um, and then whatever you agree to, once they put in writing, we have to honour. So that is the process how it works. Right. Okay. I mean, do you want me to get the manager tonight then? Yeah, please, yeah. No problem. It's all right if I call you Paul. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. I'm just going to wait a few minutes, and then I'll get the manager, all right? All right. That would be a way forward, and um, with that... No, OK. Um, yeah, but once we got that information back, then our team will look into um, the how much customers get, um, and if there's anything else that we can do with any there's any benefit checks and um, we can get you on. But moving forward, we, we still would um, charge you the daily standing charge, which is um, 26.1 pence per day. Um, so no, that's fair enough. I mean, you can all do what you're doing, what you're allowed to do, what you've been told to do. You know, that's all the thing you can do. But what I'm saying is I'm going to pursue this um, this thing for the exceptional circumstance just because I know it, it does exist. No, I'm not doing it just for myself, I'm doing it, you know, for everybody else that you're really suffering. I'm not for sure, Mr. That's within your way to do it. Right, and one day you could be in this boat, you know what I mean? So, I'm doing it for you as well. But that's fine, Mr. Tassie, that, you know, that's, if that's your property, then you can do that. But moving forward, what is it, with the end of today's telephone conversation, are you happy with the, what we're going to do for you, or...? Well, it's only, it's only, you know, it's only a promise, you know. You know, that's a dinner, finish it. Okay, well, we'll just see you on my You mean you mean the team with authority? Sorry? You mean the team with authority to remove the standing charge? They, they are, I can assure you the township we will not remove the Well, well that's fair enough, but I can assure you that one day you will. Unless that, that because is you've got Because you've got no right to apply it. Yeah. I appreciate what you're saying, Mr. Tansby. I'm not going to get in those arguments because we're just keeping that in mind. Yeah, that's fair enough, yeah. So, yeah. that's your opinion, you're entitled to your opinion, Mr. Tansby. Um, but, you know, as a business, we, we are in our right to charge you for the upkeep of the meter and the network. Um, you know, maybe not, when it, not when it goes against my human rights, you don't. Well, you know, I'm not going to get into those conversations, Mr. Tansby, because I'm not well, going to waste your well, evening. Well, like I said, when you get dragged into court, you'll have to go through many more conversations. It's fine, Mr. Tansby, and if right. it happens, we will go through the necessary... No, not, not we, it'll be you. That's fine, Mr. Tansby. You. You're the one I will talk to. I'm not going to go... I'm not going to go... Company's not going to get involved. It'll be you. 
That's funny, Stancy. That, that's so, they're, not, they're not going to look after you. That's funny, Stancy. I'm not going to entertain that conversation because I'm not going to waste the time. It's not what I think she will complain. All right, fair enough. So what we're going to do is just say that our person is just senior management team um, after the pass the flower gets back and then we'll be in contact with you and my team with our final decision. If you're unhappy with that, you do have the way to go to your management. Right, okay. Is there anything else I can help with? Yeah, just to um, confirm that you're still sending me out the full disclosure of the original contract. I'm to ask my senior management team and they'll get that done for you. What was that, Sarah? It'll be, uh, because we've not come to the solution, it will be passed to our senior management team. So they're looking to your complaint and then what we'll do is we will be in contact with you and waiting and we'll put that in, the, in that with you as well. Okay, so apart from actually answering the phone, what, what, what else can you do? Everything seems to be passed on to other departments and higher, higher management. And but what, what actually is your job? Because we're not coming to the solution, Mr. Hansley. Because we, you know, we, we, I'm not going to sit on the phone and argue with all these things. So you're just, you're just, you're just an advisor. I'm not an advisor. I'm a manager, Mr. Hansley. But you know what you so want, what, I can't give you. I can't wait the stand. But you're, you're a man, you're a manager of advisors because all your colleagues or or spoke to can only just offer advice. But that, that's been our job, Mr. Tanzi. We're not going to give you. If we can't come to resolution, there's no, then it will be passed on as part of our deadlock procedure. No. I'm not going to sit on the phone. No. I've already been through this deadlock procedure before. And that's what I'm saying, but I'm not, I'm not going to work the standing charge off. And as I said, we will all the way over the path of failed to see if there's anything else we can do for you. But moving forward, you know, we have given you, um, you know, Tom has given you. Um, options with different charities, and we have, you know, gone through that with you. Yeah, he's done well for his training, bless him, he's done well. But, you know, it's I'm not, not, it's not, it's not really him, I, I'm getting at it, you know, he's the main man of, of of all these interest players, plus the government as well, but because they put people like you on the front line, we're forced to, you know, pressure you into doing something yeah. about it. That's fine, Mr. Tansy, but if you, if you don't like that as your job, then you should probably get another one, but... I'm not going to go into this don't, conversation. Don't, don't stop people from complaining, that's all I'm saying. That's fine, and then you have your right to complain. Yeah. But I don't, I, you know... So you're, you're, right, you're, you're, you're right to listen to it as well. I do, but I'm not going to continue the phone call by arguing with all these, Mr. Tansby. As I said, we will be back in contact with you and my team. Right, OK. And when will that be? Uh, it, with our deadlock team, they'll be with you in the next... So we're waiting for the path of fill, which should be within five days, and then we will be back in contact and let us the next ten working days. Right. Next okay. couple of weeks. Well, what's your name, Sarah? My name is Ash. Ash. Elvis and Webb. Right. Okay. Okay. Then thanks for your um, for your time and That's also fine. also for Tom as well if he's still there. Oh, well, I'll pass on. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thanks, thanks. Bye.